Hi everybody, this is Gijs again and this is something different. You might remember that a few weeks ago I made a post on Instagram on my story that I was traveling to Amsterdam to meet up with Ada Kelver. And Ada Kelver is a leading Norwegian writer and stand-up comedian. And he wrote a book about outdoor. Um, I got this because I had an assignment from one of the bigger travel companies in the Netherlands, SNP.nl. They do sustainable outdoor travel. Um, and they agreed that if I did a video on it in English, that I could use it for my YouTube channel. So guys at SMP, many, many thanks for this. Ade Kalvo and outdoor. Well, the book in Dutch is called The Outdoor Waanzin, which translates into English hiking to hell. And I must be honest, hiking to hell sounds a lot more interesting than the outdoor Waanzin, which is something like the outdoor madness. He wrote this book because Ada started losing friends to the great outdoors the last past years. And it's got something to do with aging. Um, that he loses friends to girlfriends, new girlfriends, he doesn't care about that. But to the outdoors, it's something he really doesn't understand. And the book he wrote about it is really interesting. It's not about losing his friends solely. It's also about sustainability a bit. It's about outdoor gear. It's about hiking in terrible weather and still saying that you love the hike. Um, it's 330 pages and it took me about seven hours to read it and I did it in one go. So that means I'm not a reader. I really, really love the book and it is very well written. Now, the video, I shot it on the way from Amsterdam station to the residence of the Norwegian ambassador in The Hague. Den Haag, uh, me and Aarde and the publisher in the car. Well, I drive an old Toyota Land Cruiser and it's quite noisy and it was stormy weather so there was a lot of wind. The first 20 minutes there is quite some wind in the car and you can hear it in the video. Sometimes it's difficult to hear so I will hope that you will still be able to hear everything that Aarde has to say and otherwise well I do apologize. But after 20, 25 minutes, we get in a traffic jam and sound is fine afterwards. So otherwise, skip the beginning. Now, at the end of the video, um, we'll get back here in my studio and I will ask you a question about the video and then you can win the book. But not this one, because this one is dirty and used. I've got another one and it's of course, it's this one. Um, and what the nice thing is about this one is that Ade, on my request, put his autograph in there and also a nice little drawing of him climbing a mountain. Now this is of course the Dutch book. If you are not Dutch speaking then I will try to get an English version. But at the end again I will get back to you and I have a question on that one hour of video that I shoot with Aarde in the car. Now first enjoy the video. Let's skip the intro. Let's just go directly to Aarde and hiking to hell or the outdoor Wahnsinn. Okay. That's, uh, Do you want me here? Yeah, no, sit here, please. That will be fine. Did you have a good journey? Yeah, on, on bike or, or flying here? Oh, I know you like flying. So. <laughs> <laughs> you had a, a great bike ride through Amsterdam right yeah. now. With a good guide. <laughs> what about the welcome. translator? Uh, Paula, oh, she goes by train. She goes all. by train, okay. Yeah. Oh, then, I didn't tell you, sorry. Buckle yeah. up. She coming along as well. Yeah, Paula, yeah, yeah. see you. Nice. Yeah, all the way from uh, the north. It's quite a long way. From? Where is Groningen. She? So I think she Groningen? Been, yeah, she must have been trained for four or five hours. Yeah, that's a pretty long, a pretty long way. She's very dedicated. Sounds good. Okay, off we go. Nice car. Thanks. <laughs> Somebody likes it. <laughs> and I also you come to the Netherlands quite a lot of times, or you uh, don't? Um, well, it depends on what you mean by quite a lot. I've been here at least three times before. Four okay. times before, I think, yeah. But then you stick to Amsterdam, or...? So far, I've uh, only been in Amsterdam and at a football stadium somewhere. 
I'm not sure where. <laughs> I, all I know is that Norway lost a game there in the European Championships mm. in Okay, I, was, I wasn't going to mention football, to be honest. Good, good. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, but you like football. I do, yeah. Well, I'm not crazy, but I, I like the big occasions. I like you like because of Alisson the orange color of the Dutch team, probably. <laughs> wow, you're good. You're good. <laughs> the two only teams in the world with that color. Yeah, only. I think only we didn't choose it. You did. Nope, nobody does. No, no. Nah, no. sort of. You for Alisson was forced to choose it because they ran out of colors. I, I, I my <laughs> guess is they were the last team that got to choose colors. The, all the others were taken: yellow, red, blue. So they said, Olison, what would you like? Well, we'll have whatever's left. Something different. <laughs> so, so, are you that familiar with Norwegian football or have you Googled? No, I have not Googled. Really? In the first place, I read the book in total, yeah. which makes a difference. Well, instead yeah. of just going diagonal through all the pages, <laughs> um, that's one thing. Yeah. And I'm. Travel sometimes, not only to Norway but also to Scandinavia. I'm not totally keen on football, but I've got two girls, 14 and 16, and they are absolutely mad about football. There you go. So last, when was it? December, we went to women's football, of course, mm -hmm. which is absolutely awesome. It is. Because there are not those exaggerated persons that our football players are nowadays. They fall down when they are not even hit. <laughs> and that's really what I don't like. But that's my relation to football and it doesn't go anywhere else. Now, you are born on the 31st of, de no, yes, 31st of December. Yeah, New Year's Eve. 69. Yeah. That makes us the same age. Well, um, but I was thinking age. about the day that you're born. Actually, you only have about a few hours of birthday. Because then the next day starts and the next year starts. Yeah. Is that sort of funny? No, I, st I still celebrate my birthday way into the next year. I've never had a problem with that. Okay. Don't you? Wouldn't you? No, I'm born in, I'm, I'm in August. Here in August. So that's quite sort of in the middle. And I live up to it and yeah. afterwards I can have an after party. That's good. Well, I've, I've always taken uh, New Year's Eve celebrations personally. I take them to be about me. That's the only way to do it. Okay. Because at school it was it was a sad thing to have a birthday in the middle of everyone's holiday. Yeah. Because no one was home, no one could come. But now as an adult, it's brilliant. Every, <laughs> everybody turns up and the party never ends. Okay, that's good, that's good. Now, um, the Dutch book has got a sort of funny title. <laughs> Outdoor Wahnsinn. How do the you pronounce outdoor, that? Yeah, the Outdoor Wahnsinn. The Outdoor Wahnsinn. Um, which I would translate into English into the Outdoor Madness. Yeah, that's the way I've or understood craziness. it as well. Yeah. But now the English title. Yeah. Hiking to Hell. The English title is, is a title for ACDC fans. But, uh... <laughs> Wait, but, but which title is going to be more to the original language that you wrote it in? Uh, I think the Norwegian title is hard to translate to other languages because uh, literally the Norwegian title means uh, cabin book from hell and cabin, cabin book is, is a phenomena that is well known to Norwegians but doesn't necessarily mean the same in other languages so that's hard ah. to translate. But I think uh, Hiking to Hell is a really good title. I came up with it. That's why yeah, I think it's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also, I also like the German version. I think that's close as well. Uh, Freiluft It Hölle. looks sort of similar yeah. in, in tone of voice. But um, uh, I, what I like, uh, I like the Dutch title a lot. And I, I like the sound of it. I like the look of it. <laughs> it's a bit and harsh. I also like, yeah, but it's supposed to be harsh. The Norwegian title <laughs> no, is also harsh. But then it was a good translation. Yeah. But, uh, and I also like that it's uh, possible to understand even though you don't know a word of Dutch. I don't know Dutch, but I know what that title means the yeah. minute I see okay. it. And I think it describes what the book is about quite well. Um, I, well, yes, I do totally agree <laughs> on that. Um, you grew up in Stranda. That's right. Which is a small city, town. 
town, yeah, the town, yeah. Village. On the fjords, one of the most famous fjords. Yeah, it's right in next the to whole of the world. Right next to guide, the guide on good uh, fjords. So I, I've grown up in a, in a postcard, or as we would say today, I've grown up in Instagram. I've grown up looking at fjords and mountains all my life. I live in a village of the same amount of people. Three thousand. Yeah, three thousand five hundred something. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's crowded. <laughs> Well, you, you're dressed. You're dressed like this. Yeah, so, there's a difference so between you, you and me. Totally. <laughs> it is um, very different right now. I'm dressed for the embassy. You're dressed for. I don't know. Are well, you going I just. Hiking? I asked my followers, "How should I dress?" Yeah, and they said, "Should I dress be like you always do, or should I be fancy?" Yeah, and they wrote to me, "Be outdoor," because yeah. that's how I am. That's how I know. But of course, I've got Nexus set in the back. I don't have a shirt i just don't have it i don't own it you don't uh, own a shirt no, no not like this no, no, you call this no. a jacket it's a jacket yeah i don't know i do own it so. <laughs> it's mostly that's for funerals so. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not something that i choose to wear um now you live in oslo yeah i came from den haag where we're traveling now and i moved to Treubel, a little town because i needed the silence yeah, so the difference um, between us is I'm, do, I'm do, you, you totally don't, different. You, you do don't like people, I like people. No, I love people. Just to not so many of them at the not same time. Not even, but in, I choose when I see them. Yeah, so do I. Uh, you, you do that in a city if you want to. It's not hard to avoid people. And I, I'm, I'm a writer, I work alone, so I don't need to be alone when I have time off. And I need noise and people. You can't live maybe. without. You can't live without noise. I like noise. Almost Very everything. Well. Almost everything I like has a sound. Uh, so, which means silence. Silence kind of scares me because it's never completely silent. There's always something. There's always the sound of someone trying not to make a sound, as a writer once called it, which is just the scariest sound in the world. So, um, silence scares me. I like the sound of. I think it's comforting to hear that there are people nearby. It makes you feel fun. more relaxed. It makes me feel yeah. relaxed and in, in a good mood. I like the sound of, of, of a party in a distance. I love that sound, for instance. Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like. I like sounds, but when we've got a, a sort of party village uh, with a lot of young people, and when they go like at two o'clock in the night, they go, the only thing you hear is. Yeah, I go totally wrong. You do? Yeah, because I don't wow. hear the rest of the sounds that are supposed to be inside, inside that music. Yeah, I yeah, get that. But Put it louder mm. or don't do it. So I need to get closer, basically. So then you go over there and you knock on their door and you say, turn the music up. Because I can only Can I the join bass. the party? <laughs> yeah, that's the best thing to do. That's the best thing. That's, and and it's, it's quite difficult to um, read your book because it's not difficult to read. <laughs> but Hopefully not. A lot that you write is basically what I think. Yeah. And I'm in the outdoor business, but I'm a bit maybe the old one out. Because I don't I'm not like the people that go up the mountain who say and, and go that's a bit here. No. There aren't um, that many. I've mountains. got the same silly thing about what people do in the outdoors. Um when you talk about, when you write about where you grew up, you talk about, and now I have to, a stabur? Yeah. Is that the correct pronunciation? That's a very good pronunciation. I have no idea what the Dutch word for that is, or what... We'll probably call it some sort of shed. Yeah, it's bigger than a shed. It's uh, bigger? Yeah. It's a mega shed. It's a, it's a mega <laughs> shed, that's what it is. A huge shed, where you put everything, that you, you don't know where to put something put it there. So that's one of those things that when you enter it after a few years again you find something and you're totally surprised that you still have it. Yeah. It's okay. Do, do you have one at home at the moment where you live in Oslo? No. Uh, because it's not possible because of size? Yeah you don't have the room for it but you know I, I have 
have a garage shed, but that's tiny. It is a micro. That's a micro shed, yes. We've invented some brilliant new words right now. <laughs> the mega shed and the micro shed. Okay. Um, let's talk about Norway. Um, what I do know from Norway, and I've been there a couple of times, but not too many. Uh, Norway is a rich country. Yes. You have oil. Yes. I've heard somebody telling me that you get government money for free. <laughs> you have the highest monthly income in Europe. Do we? Yes. Yeah, right. According Possibly. to the internet, but you Possibly, seem yeah. to research on the internet as well. So yeah, yeah. Why should I do it? That's what it's there for. But yeah, but it's you know it's about let's say euros. It's two thousand seven hundred in the Netherlands. As an average, it's eight thousand euros in Norway, which is sort of. Difference, yeah. Um, but you, you, all drive, that, you all drive Teslas. You all drive electric. That's it's, not that's not true. But, uh, but it's a big percentage of yeah. the cars that are sold yeah. in, in Norway. It's not crowded. No. You've got the outdoors that I dream about. Um, and still, you choose to live in the city. Why do you complain about the outdoors? If you live in such a great country. Well, because no one else does, that's a good start. Uh, you don't dare to, to be honest. <laughs> now, yeah, but when you, when you live in a country like that, which is more nature than, than people, more nature than towns and yeah. cities, um, then you, you, you're just expected, people just expect that you love nature, that you dream of the outdoors. And, that, and also very many people in Norway think that people who live in Oslo really don't want to live there. They live there because they have to, yeah. Uh, because of the work, or because their husband or wife insisted, or some some other reason. Uh, a lot of people think that if we got to choose absolutely freely, we would all be sitting alone in the woods on a rock, staring out to sea or something. Um, but that's not the case for me, uh, and probably not the case for that many others either, because people are moving voluntarily to cities even though as you said about government money economically it really pays off to live somewhere else than Oslo uh, because it's cheaper because it's cheaper and because you will get money from the government to move to some of these places uh, and you get benefits ah, and you it's, get, it's, get it's a politic yeah, it's politi thing, getting yeah. better people back into politicians, the countryside again. Polit politicians want people to live everywhere in, in Oslo. That's a political aim in Norway okay. still. People are moving to the cities, so that must mean people actually want to live. The then it should be quite easy for me to move to Norway. Do you, you have a higher education? If you're a doctor, for yeah. instance, and uh, move to somewhere? My wife has. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's good. She... Oh, sounds nice. Yeah. <laughs> now I see opportunities. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I, I, the thing about the outdoor is I don't hate it. I, I just, I'm just not crazy about it. I just yeah. find it you boring. You like it? Boring. boring. Yeah, we'll get to the boring later. Yeah. Um, now you're right also that your book is the purpose is to find Friends. So that's your last in the time yeah, it's frame to, period. To, yeah, I've lost them. So not to girlfriends, but to the outdoors. Yeah, they're somewhere out there in the woods. But uh, if, if, if 80% of the Norwegians are living in towns, yeah. isn't it just logical that your friends move into the outdoors? Probably, because most people end up doing this at some stage in life but it's also interesting when this happens because uh, there's there's a, a few years uh, where people most people and most of my friends anyway did not uh, enjoy outdoor life were not interested in it didn't talk about it uh, which is uh, from say 18 to 20 and up to mid 30s that's when something begins to happen when you're done studying when yeah. you, you've got a steady job and a family and a home and a career and steady income and 
life is starting to get a little bit boring and you're beginning to think, is that it? And also, you're getting closer to the death-fearing age. You're staring the 40s in the eyes and you're beginning to, to think, oh, there must be something else. And that's when people suddenly start realizing, I really love nature. I just didn't know before now. Which indicates to me that there is, and statistics also show that this is the age where most people start enjoying the outdoor life. So, so um, to me, there's something of, of a collective midlife crisis about it. It's, it's as if the entire country has gone into a midlife crisis. And a quite boring midlife crisis, because midlife crisis can be fun if you've seen comedy movies about it. It's, it, it there are midlife you crises find where... Second with your life. Yeah, but that's that's not necessarily that, but uh, well, you can, you know, there are you, there's a midlife crisis uh, kind when you have wild parties and, and wake up missing two front teeth in, in cities you can't remember having traveled to, that kind of midlife crisis, which is the opposite of going hiking yeah. in the mountains, which is what most people tend to do when they reach this age. So it's got something to do with age, and it's got something to do with fear of death. I think. And it's got a lot to do with boredom. And I also think it's got a lot to do with getting away from your life, which is the thing that's encouraged uh, in Norway. Uh, we see that, uh, that as a good thing to avoid other people. Uh, I don't think it's a good thing. I think you should get along with other people. Yeah. But, uh, but, but, but avoiding other people is seen as, as a good thing in Norway. And, and it was praised when a Norwegian political leader told everybody at a press conference that he made the decision to run for prime minister alone in the mountains. He didn't talk to anyone. He was all alone in the mountains when he asked himself, do I want to be prime minister? Should I be prime minister? And the mountains told him, yes. I find that ridiculous. He should have talked to someone. Yeah, that's, that's what And happens. he lost the election. I oh, risk my case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you want to be prime minister, talk to talk to the people. Talk to the people. Don't talk to, the, don't talk to the mountains. Don't talk to rocks. They will talk to people. Turn, talk, talk back. Um, how open is Norwegian Allemans Nest? Um, it's um, not as open as it's supposed to be. Thank you so much. <laughs> because well, I was going to complain to you. Yeah. No, yeah, Norwegians are very proud of it, and Norwegians seem to think that this is something that only exists in Norway, which is far from true. It exists in many countries. Uh, well, it's supposed to be uh, like there's, for instance, along the coast, there's supposed to be a zone that's open to everyone. Uh, 100 meters, I think. You're yeah. supposed to be able to walk anywhere uh, along the coast, which is not the case because people have. Cabins. No, that's that's one of the things that surprises me every time when I go to Norway. Is that you've got the Allemansrecht, where you've got, and you're right in the book as well, you've got so many people of a certain age buying holiday homes, building holiday yeah. homes, buying basically property and land, yeah. putting signs and fences, and yeah. those, how do you call them in English? Slagbomen. Slagvek? Yeah, what was the, I have no idea what that is in English. I'm not sure they have a word for it in English. But it's like the fact that it's something like Swiss something? But you know what I mean? Yeah. Boom. Okay. Boom is the so word. that means that there is no Allemansrecht whatsoever? No, in practice, no. There, there, there isn't. But I, I don't think uh, a lot of the fences that people put up, the signs that people put up, uh, you're not obliged to respect them. You are allowed to go there. But people don't. Uh, uh, but that, that you, you have the law. Friendly. You have the law on your side if you if you uh, did cross that fence. No, don't try it if you're on holiday. Don't go that way. You, well, you don't have to because there's still a lot of leftover free space yeah, in that, Norway. That, that, that's definitely true. Um, you talk a lot about outdoor people in your book. Um, just give me some feedback. Outdoor people are not communicative. Well, no, not in general. Uh, not in the. I, I, I had fun with that when I was did 
hiking for, for research for the book. Yeah. Because uh, the rule in Norway is, and, and outdoor people think this is fantastic and, and, and beautiful, is that you, you greet everyone you meet. You smile and you say hi. But, hey, hey. but if But preferably not more than that. And what I uh, enjoyed doing very much when I was skiing for uh, a week uh, in the mountains uh, at Easter time was to stop people and, and try to talk to them, and say more than just hi, uh, and, and try to involve them in a conversation, and and also in a conversation that is not about hiking or the weather or snow or skiing or how far is it to the next cabin, but about music or yeah. politics. It's not appreciated. In it's not appreciated no. at all. You get into their so small social bubble. Yeah, and they're in the zone. They You're were, not allowed to talk about no. what's private. No, no, and no. the outdoor things is in general, it's fine about the mic. And yeah, but how do people are liars? Yeah, well, that, yeah, that's the one thing I did find out. Find out. Um, I, have, I, I didn't meet one single person told one true thing uh, and I, I was out there for three weeks hiking and didn't meet anyone who told the truth about anything uh, one thing is that they lie about how far it is how, how long does it take to get there uh, uh, and another thing is is the bragging was, was, was it hard? No How do people brag about their achievements? Their achievements and, and they're never scared of anything which is just stupid if you are mountain on slippery wet rocks and it's completely foggy you can't see a thing but you know that on your right and on your left is 300 meters straight down you should be if really you, scared if you're not like scared then there's something wrong with you. yeah no. the people no. will claim that no i wasn't scared but because of this 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 well the world that they create by themselves not telling the truth and bragging about it. That's probably the reason why so many people have pictures on, on Instagram and Facebook cheering what the achievement they did. Yeah, they, they're, they're, they have their, they're beating their chests yeah. or their arms are outstretched and reaching I for heaven. I couldn't find one picture of you. <laughs> With my arms reaching With your around. arms up where somewhere. No, no, no. I'm, you, bad, you, you didn't post them or you banned them or nobody else posted them for you. No, I'm, I, I think it's pretty awesome if you, if you don't remember. I don't. I um, don't. Would you also say that outdoor people are missionaries? Yeah, which is, which is strange considering uh, uh, how many outdoor people say that the point is to, to get away from the crowds, to get away from the noise, to be alone. Uh, uh, and it's strange uh, to how much they want more people to go out there because uh, they're eager to convince you that this is the life, this is where you should yeah. be which is a strange thing if you want to be there alone then they should be happy that there's not more people out uh, there that, that's why I came to the conclusion that if you say that outdoor people are not communicating but they're missionaries as well then something is colliding because well, missionaries do. tend to speak a lot about their true religion. Speaking a lot about your true religion isn't the same as being communicative. That's speaking, no, communicative that's speaking is a way direction. Yeah. Right? That's <laughs> a big difference. No, that's okay. Well, North I've been there. You've been there? I'll yeah. go one. <laughs> that's by the coast, right? There's the beach, yeah. beaches there. Yeah, yeah. 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 stay yeah. there. Yeah. Um, it's coming back to me. <laughs> that's what I like. This is a spot where I'm always afraid of. There's a lot of trucks crashing on this spot, and then the whole road is blocked. Yeah. Outdoor life, silence, you mentioned it already. Um, listening to you, I think, did you ever experience true silence? Yeah, I know what silence is. It means it's silent. Yeah, I experienced that a lot. And, and I don't like it. <laughs> at worst, I find it scary. At best, I find it boring. But I can, uh, I can enjoy uh, uh, 
solitary uh, outdoor experiences, but they also involve uh, sounds. I can I can sit staring at the ocean, listening to the waves for three hours. That's not a problem. But silence. Yeah. Yeah. I've been in the desert. Yes, I have. In a car, not unlike this. Um, <laughs> It was a couple of years ago, I was in, in uh, the empty quarters yeah. in Oman, which is on the frontier to Saudi Arabia. And that was that, that freaked me out because there was you know, blood and dunes, not even the wind, you could not hear anything except from the noise coming from the, the blood veins in your ear, yeah. which is sound as well. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but that was basically one of the first times I was like, okay, yeah, this, this is pretty scary. Um, you also said that outdoor life is about being humble or void. I don't know actually what the right word is because in the Dutch it's, it's quite a specific word. Nederigheid, which is being humble. Yeah. Um, you don't like being humble. Yeah, I do. I like being humble. I'm, I'm humble by a lot of things. I'm not humble by a mountain. Uh, I'm not humbled by. Anyway, I can be humbled by nature, but that's the obvious thing. You're a tiny, tiny human being. But I'm also I'm humbled by all the stuff that human beings are able to do together every day in every society. That humbles me. That is brilliance. That is true brilliance. That makes me feel small. Uh, a mountain doesn't impress me in the same way because it just it stands there. there. It does nothing. <laughs> doesn't make anything better. People together make things better. That's, to me, that's humbling. Outdoor life and logistics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I think I think probably that's the thing about outdoor life that I hate the most. Because no, that's the thing in life that I hate the most. That's hassle. Um, yeah. Carrying too much stuff. Uh, packing, repacking. Uh, not being able to just walk where you want to go and, and relax and sit down if there's some place to sit down. And, and, and there's a lot of hassle involved uh, in, in outdoor life, which is ironic because outdoor life is supposed to be the opposite of the everyday hassle. Now, I'm open to the possibility that this could be because I'm just not very good at it. So if I got more experience in, in outdoor life, you, you don't think so? No. It's, there's always no, going to be hassle. It's, it, it, it remains a hassle, and I think it's absolute. Logistics, it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Every trip that I do, you pack your stuff, and I know something about outdoor clothing, stuff that I bring. Okay. And every time it's the freaking weather that tells me different. Yeah. And the weather, how good the forecasts are, or how good the forecasts are you can never, ever have enough stuff with you. That's what I hate about outdoor. But I hate it when I go outside my house as well. Yeah. Because you always seem to have the wrong jacket with you. Yeah, the, the, I find so that. The hassle and the logistic yeah. at home. Yes, at home it's easier because you've got everything you're covered. Yeah, but, yeah, but, it's, yeah, but it's, it's the same thing. I find exactly the same things annoying when I'm, I'm, I'm going to have my cup of coffee yeah. outside on the terrace today. I think I brought everything with me put my book with me, the radio's on, I have the coffee in my hand, and I sit down and shit, it's too cold. Right. I have to go back in and get a jacket. Logistics and hassle get in your head as a sort of panic in the end. Well, if, if I'm on a mountain <laughs> and I realize I don't have the stuff that I need now, that will make me panic, probably. But that's but basically but lack of experience. That is lack of like experience, yeah. But I'll because you're fired. probably adept better to sit in love than I am. Probably. I freak out in Amsterdam. That would be interesting to see. Oh, no, not at all. <laughs> I freak out in aeroplanes as well. That's that's bloody awful for the other people. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that happen. That's but that's nice. like too much people in one spot. They're what? Too close to me. Okay, and how? how do but you I do like people. Yeah, how do you freak out if, if too many, if it's too crowded? Well, probably lose the same. I start screaming. You start screaming? Wow. Like everybody. Get out of my way. Don't be near me. I do really terrible things to people. 
just to get them out of my way. And then, what, it's then just... what happens? The police come? No, I had I had it on the aeroplane once. Then, yeah. okay. uh, cabin crew. Well, there's there's a there's what's the problem, sir? <laughs> there are too many people on this aeroplane. Well, they trained to deal with. Them. Yeah, no, yeah. it went perfectly. When I'm in the town, I know how to restrain myself. Right now. I don't like to go to a football stadium that, with my girls. Yeah. That was really something special for me. And I didn't freak out because the people were nice. Yeah, people. And they were not nice. drunks. People are which, nice. The people are not. Yeah, it was true. Not nice. Outdoor food. You don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I'm you? Not a present for you. Can you like it? But it's in the I, back somewhere. Yeah. Thank you. Did that, did that, but, well, the idea is, is of course, uh, according to the outdoor people, that uh, after a long, strenuous hike, food tastes so much better. And, and it, was, it was my girlfriend who pointed out that uh, if you have to walk for seven hours to make food taste good, then I'd rather just eat good food. <laughs> I can't carry everything on my backpack if I want to have good food. No, that's true, but but then then you can you can go for a shorter hike where you don't need to, uh, to bring food. Or you hike, or you hike to a very posh mountain camp. Yeah, yeah, we don't have very posh in the Alps. Yeah, I know. That's not not in Norway. Um, explain, Lopskaus. How do I pronounce it correctly? Lobskos. Lobskos? Lobskos, yeah. It's a sort of stew? It's a sort of stew, yeah. It's, it's you, Basically, you take uh, the rest of what stuff that you haven't eaten from your fridge for the past two weeks, and you chuck it in, and you make a stew, basically. So it's, it's traditionally uh, very cheap, poor yeah. man's uh, meals. Uh, and, and, and very typical outdoor meals now, easy to make. I'm Tastes so happy, happy we're getting to this moment now because traffic has come to a complete stop. Yeah. And when you read the book, the guy next to me does something which is absolutely stupid. He loves being in a queue. Okay, yeah, not this kind of queue. Ah! <laughs> no, no, no. We're going up a hill. <laughs> Yeah. To the preekstoelen. Yeah, preekstoelen. Preekstoelen. Yeah. You like being in a queue. Then I had, uh, before that, I had been walking around in rain and fog in Jotunheimen, where, where all the highest mountains in Norway are, uh, which, which to me was completely pointless. I couldn't see a thing, uh, and and there was there was no no one there, basically. But but everyone I met, the few people I did meet, said it was lovely. It's a great hike. Didn't see a thing. Wasn't scared at all. Lovely hike. Uh, and after that, I decided, okay, um, this isn't going to convert me to the outdoor life. So I, we have to find somewhere where there's nice weather, where I can reach a peak and see if I feel like reaching for the sky uh, when I'm being photographed. So we, 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 we actually, we Googled and found the only place in Norway the next day that had nice weather where you can go hiking, which was Preikestul, which is a huge tourist attraction and, and pretty close to a couple of cities. So it's easy to get there. So there's a lot of people uh, and it was a Saturday and it was nice weather. So, uh, and then I walked in line, which is, is what all ha outdoor people I talk to hate. <laughs> Don't go where everybody else goes. You'll walk in line, which is not true, by the way. Um, but I, when I finally came to Preikestul uh, in sun on a Saturday, and there was a lot of people there, I was so happy. That was I loved that. There were tourists. I, I can't there. imagine if you think that hiking is in principle boring. It was than, much than being talkative to people. Yeah. That's your ideal. That must be your ideal thing. Visit all the bucket list things that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. well, you, well, it makes it more fun than walking alone. I, I, I don't think I think that interesting thoughts. <laughs> or maybe it is that I, I, I do that for a living. I do that from, from 8 to 4 at my office every day. I think. Being alone and think. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. what I do. So, 
Uh, so maybe I, I have a, a need for something else when I have time off. So, but walking in line uh, together with tourists from 12 different countries was so much more fun than walking all alone yeah. in the fog and the rain in Jotunheim. So I, I recommend lines. And, and another good thing about lines is that you get help if you need it. Uh, you can ask yeah. people stuff. If you're all alone in the fog and you have no idea where to go, there's no one to No, ask. like in the beginning of the book. Yeah. Walking to a cabin where there's nothing. Mm. <laughs> having, yes. having a bad meal. I was wondering if you work, what kind of outdoor meal you had. Was it in an orange? Yeah. They're actually pretty good. So people keep telling me. In in relation to what is available on the outdoor market, so in that yeah. respect. But I don't I don't get it. There's 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 food made out of powder or whatever whatever it is. That's yeah, that's perfect. dried stuff. Yeah, but but it's but it's a lot of that is is perfectly possible to eat. Mm -hmm. This outer food just isn't. Is 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 Norway and mountains a good place for vegetarians? No. No, <laughs> then you seem to then eat a lot starve. of meat in the. <laughs> you get meat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in in these cabins. Not breakfast. I'm over. Oh, yeah, that's not true. But for lunch and dinner, you get meat, meat, and meat. I I got I got fish one day. Yeah, that was which was some revelation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, is that po which? is that even allowed? I think, I thought, and. Um, and it was nice. It's not too. in the Norwegian outdoor Bible, probably. No, so I'm. I'm if, if you're a vegan, don't go hiking no, no, in Norway. No, no, it's you, a don't bad go idea. hiking anywhere. <laughs> you, you will starve, and you, you won't make it to whatever small summit. It's not possible. No. Um, politics. You don't talk too much in your book about politics, uh, but you. May, I think you make some interesting remarks. One of them was, of course, on, on the politician going outdoors and thinking about being prime minister, mm -hmm. which I think was a, um, a sweet remark to make. Um, and you also quote um, the reverend, I believe is the correct word, Richard Carter Smith, that wrote yeah. about his holidays in Norway. And he stated that he ranks a simple farmer higher than a well-educated person. Yeah. And then you make a remark that I don't Understand. Um, <laughs> I like you that make you don't understand. Mark that you point still see this today mm -hmm. and know what party they vote. Mm -hmm. Tell me what party. I love your reaction to that because that's exactly my. That's exactly what I wanted with that joke. Uh, I wanted everybody to think, okay, I know that too, or do I? <laughs> I know what party I was thinking of, but I wanted that remark to be a remark that could mean different things to different readers. Well, to be honest, I think, I'll, I'll give you the answer, please correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. and what your answer is, I think extreme right. Yeah, I think that, that's what most people would think. And but they don't go outdoors. No. no. They uh, just sit in their office and talk about how bad everybody is. Yeah. Well, in, in, in Norway, I think a lot of people will think about the same party that I think about, uh, which is a... I would call them, and I'm abroad now, so I can. A populist um, yeah. district. No, that's uh, a nicer way of saying right wing. Yeah, they're not right wing. They're 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 anti uh, anti urban. They're anti city. They're anti Oslo. Ah, uh, and, okay. And they're Ooh, that's a total different. Pro pro farming, pro districts, uh, anti EU. So they have uh, they have uh, similarities to some right-wing parties in, yeah. in a no, few but senses, just, but they're entirely different. They're not a right-wing party at all. That's but, something but we don't have. District populists. Yeah, okay. Uh, so in Norway, many readers will think that's who I'm referring to. Uh, and I think many other places, people will think right-wing. No, because then that's, I started thinking about the book and, and like how Norwegian is this book and is what you write, is it um, transferable to the big part of Europe? And most of it, most of it, it is. Mm -hmm. But this, and this was one of the things that really it, it puzzled me last night. That I went, okay, what should I do with this? <laughs> um, well, that's good. I, I like jokes that makes you think. Aha! I know. No, hang on. Is that what it really means? I like that. What's the? Because you mentioned this as well. Uh, Nietzsche is the favorite <laughs> philosopher of the Nazis. Yeah. And later on in the book, you talk about the outdoor, outdoor Stasi. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is have, there still some sort of Have I had any reaction war? from my German readers? <laughs> is no. There, no, 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 no. <laughs> Uh, funny, funny. But is there is there still some sort of thing about the war going on that you make this remark, no. or do you think that outdoor people are actually tell uh, tell everybody um, what you're not doing right and what you're doing wrong to everybody? Uh, you, you, this this the, this the Stasi uh, jokes really started with <laughs> with me. Uh, I think I'd seen a film about that era, uh, about East Germany in that era, um, right before one of our hikes. And so, something about the way uh, outdoor people behaved reminded me of it. And, and, and the episode that really made me think of it was when I was talking to a friend of mine who I would really not have down as an outdoor kind of guy and who turned out to be. And then I got this feeling, you never know who they are. You can't make jokes about the outdoor people to anyone because they could be anyone. This, this, was, this was a pale, delicate musician type who's, by the look of him, he's, nev he's never been outside his studio or, or the theater where he works in his entire life. But he turned out to go on holidays to the Alps. That's what he did when he oh. had time off. So you you never know who they are. And that was what started <laughs> this this Stasi joke. And it went too far, and I enjoyed that too. Oh yeah, no, I, I do understand the remark because it's it's well sometimes it's quite tough to speak your mind in the out of business. <laughs> um, Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin, Angela Merkel, or Mark Rutte. Who would you go on a holiday with? On a hike. <laughs> on a Let's hike. Let's make it a bit shorter. Oh, yeah, a short hike. Uh, as it, it could, Let's it, make it a day. Let's make it a day. Okay. Are we going to? Are we? Are we going to peak where I can shove someone outside? No, we no no we're not encouraging yes, murder. Let's go that we're not way. encouraging murder. No, no. Uh, I, I would draw that remark. Uh, totally, <laughs> completely. I think, uh, well, well, I'm pretty sure Boris Johnson would be the funniest. Uh, that doesn't mean I agree with him on very much, but I think uh, that would be the most entertaining. I also think that would have to be a pretty short hike. But hey, I, I think somebody is fitter than Boris Johnson is. <laughs> yeah. So, so I choose him both because uh, I think that would be entertaining, and because I think he would stop after 20 minutes and say, "Let's have a beer." Fuck this. Let's go to the club. <laughs> okay, that was sort of what I thought as well. Um, sustainability. It's a subject you don't mention in the book. I which touch is, in on it. Which is very related to my outdoor business and, mm -hmm. and to a lot of uh, people in the Netherlands who are going nuts about sustainability. Yeah, you touch it. That's mm -hmm. absolutely true. In two ways. Um, you bought a lot of gear. Yeah. And you were surprised about the packaging and all the plastic. Yeah. Enormous amounts of packaging and enormous amount of, of equipment and enormous amounts of, of driving to where your trip starts and driving back is involved. And, and, and there's also, um, in, in Norway, uh, I think half the population roughly has a second home, a holiday home. Mm -hmm. And that is also definitely a sustainability issue, is that are we going to keep doing that? Are we all going to have two or three homes that we can't, we can't do that? So that's uh, the question I touch in on, and um, which I think is very difficult to discuss because the idea, the very idea of uh, outdoor life, uh, primitive life in a cabin, not being a friend of the environment, is 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 hard to to get people to accept. Because when you're out in nature, you automatically think that. I'm now doing nature a favor, but it's not necessarily the cause. 
we're polluting. What I found funny is that, and um, how do you s say the word, the besegen, the rich, yeah. yeah, that you are totally in the fog, you can't see anything, and you see the positive thing in the snuff laying on the <laughs> ground in front of you, yeah, <laughs> and, and you just follow the trail of the snuff because that will get you somewhere. That's all I see. So th yeah, th at least that means. People it, have walked here before. This has got to be the right way. But yeah, well, it's that, not that, the right way to put the snuff on the ground. Of course, it isn't. And you got plogging in Norway as well. Sorry, you got plogging in Norway. Plogging? Oh, you never heard of plogging? Please explain. Okay, I'll maybe try to make you a true believer. Next time when you go there, I doubt it will ever happen. But <laughs> So do I. <laughs> Take a small plastic bag and pick up everything you do. Blogging oh, yeah. is, okay, is, yeah. is an invention by a Swedish guy. Yeah, I People know started yes. running and picking up litter and yeah, that's blogging. Yeah, I know. Which no, is I sort of hip and happening we, nowadays, we, yeah, especially we, in city areas. Yeah, I know. We call it something else. I don't How know do you call it? I, I don't remember. But, but that's, it's, that's, people do this as well. I was yeah. surprised that, and I, everywhere where I go in, in Scandinavia, I'm always surprised about the snuff that you find yeah. everywhere. It's, it's, it's like cigarette stuff that we have here in, in, in the Netherlands, and I don't know why, why people do this. Um, I, do you regret that the Concorde is not flying anymore? No. Have you ever been in one? No, I haven't. Mm. Have you? No, that's why I regret it. Yeah. I've been in one, but it was in a museum. <laughs> well, and that was also pretty. <laughs> <laughs> was that amazing? It was amazing enough. Huh? Okay. But I would love to go in three hours to New York. That would make me scare my, me, my flight freight of flying from eight hours to three hours. That would make such a difference. I can see that, yes, but, but uh, it's not happening anymore. I know. No, it's it's not. Yeah, well, that's that's a the, the Concorde. The reason I mentioned the Concorde in the book is is that uh, one of the things people are saying about why we seek out the outdoors now more than ever is that. We want to stop time. We're tired of everything just going faster and faster, um, and that simply isn't true. No, that's the, that's the maybe you've got a few remarks um, conclusion on outdoor and, and the, the do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. um, the one that I like the most probably is if you've got a hangover, go hiking. Yeah, which is really a perfect thing to do because then you have to go. In my opinion, you've got a, you had a fun evening. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe in the morning you're a bit sore, but the air will get it out. That's a perfect combination. Yeah, that is a good combination. It's one of the that. things I learned. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, yeah. Drink when you, when heavily the night before and go where everybody else goes. Yeah. <laughs> um, outdoor gear, you bought a lot of stuff. You, you write in your book 40,000 kroner. Yeah. Which translates into Dutch very easily because it's 4,000 euros. Yeah. I've been looking through my gear list. Yeah. What the fuck did you buy? It says in the book exactly what I bought. I Is that for uh, four thousand and, and euros? And also, there's not even a tent in there. There's not no. Oh well, no. Uh, God no. But uh, it's Norway that expensive. Well, it is yes. Uh, but also. Uh, that that includes that price. It also includes uh, the transportation and the accommodation because staying in primitive cabins ah. in the Norwegian mountains yeah. isn't yeah. cheap either. Even by Norwegian standards, that isn't cheap. Uh, you can get a really nice hotel for the same price as you get one out of eight beds in a room uh, in a cabin in the mountains. And I know what I would choose. I think I know what you would choose. <laughs> you would choose not to buy a green jacket. I, yeah, I still have the green jacket, the greenest jacket in Scandinavia. Yeah, I've got one at home. Yeah, that I didn't green? bring it because <laughs> it's not from Norway. <laughs> it's it, from, was, it was a good from, jacket though. It's from a sister Scandinavian country. It's, 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 uh, is it a Swedish green jacket? Because yeah, I doubt the Danish don't buy stuff like that. They no, don't no, have no, stuff no. like I that. I think it's a Haglis, mm. uh, and I got the same at home. Do, do you know anything about outdoor brands in general? Outdoor what? Brands? Brand no. Raven. Yeah, but, uh, no. What kind of trousers did you buy? What brand it is? I have no idea. Should I? I 
apparently not. It survived. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it you know it, it it can be that people. I was surprised that there was not a pack list at, at the end of the book. Like this is what I brought on my travels. Yeah. Um, I do. Understand. Which me as an outdoor guy, I would have loved it, but I'm a nerd. Yeah, but yeah, yeah but I don't write for nerds. Not that oh, kind of They nerds. will get to you. <laughs> <laughs> they will find you. Yeah. No, well, what I did, and which is what I always do, I always think I write this in the book as well, but I always do when I am in specialist stores uh, and stores where, where I'm not familiar with what I'm going to buy, is that I look for the guy or the girl who least seems to belong yeah. there. Uh, I, I look They're the normal ones. Yeah, the normal ones. The ones. Uh, and, and I try, usually I try joke early on to see if there is a, a trace of humor there. And if there is, and if that person looks like he or she doesn't belong there as well, then that's my guy or my girl. And I found a guy like that when, when shopping for the, uh, the outdoor equipment. And I basically just bought what he said. So I have no idea what brands <laughs> or anything. That's a pity because I would love to know. Um, especially, I, I can I can write it down for you. Uh, I think I have it somewhere. Uh, there's there's one thing in in the Dutch translation, uh, which I I called the translator uh, about because there is the word Lufttransport. Yeah, the English translator also had a hard time with that one. But, but explain it to me. Well, what? I didn't know what it was no, myself, what? so... Oh, you didn't? No. It, it literally means air transport. In, in the Norwegian term, literally it's means air transport, air transport uh, which means uh, that the jacket breathes, I think. Okay, it's, now, okay, it's that's, that's the that, because that's the word I, I was looking for, yeah. because outdoor jackets can ventilate. Yeah, that's what it means. Because of zippers. Yeah, that's what it means. And that was the debate I had with that... Uh, translator like does he mean the zippers because then it's a sort of okay translation but if he means breathability of the fabric itself then the outdoor guys like me totally don't understand what the hell you're talking about <laughs> but it's breathability that you know this um, but the, on your outdoor gear you don't have any favorites favorite outdoor gear yeah on the stuff that you bought what did perform exceptionally well or it's not supposed to perform is it you're just you're wearing it no it's you're not performance that you sweat a lot that you get wet then if it if you don't get wet the breathability performs well then i guess everything was care. was fine yeah i know i didn't sweat as much as other people judging by the smell in the the meal cues um no i i, I wasn't really into that, I think I look good in my uh, my uh, mountain <laughs> pants. You look good. That's what counts. The few the few pictures that are in the book are actually quite nice, though. especially because of the green jacket. Um, Thank you. I yeah, know it is. Yeah. Um, at the end of the book, um, you do a langlauf ski touring. How yeah. do you call it? Um, because in Dutch it's translated as Langlaufen. Langlaufen, yeah. Uh, Nordic Sea. Cross country Cross skiing. Cross country, yeah. Okay, so that's the better word, probably. Um, you're the only one without blisters. I am. So, what did you do to prevent blisters, or what shoes did you wear? Are you asking about the brand again? <laughs> Basically, you, yes. Have you not met me yet? No, I, I've, <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, but apparently really good shoes, uh, and uh, and I, uh, I I I was good at, at breaking them in. Is that what you say? Yeah. Yeah. So walking around in the city uh, with my in my ski skiing shoes like an idiot uh, for weeks before the actual okay, trip that, started. Okay, that's important. So that's yeah? uh, probably okay. why. And also, I was the only one who had <laughs> I had bought everything new, so. Uh, Hopefully, my equipment was better than the others. Who At least some your of them shoe I, didn't break. I, it didn't. So one of, one of us had equipment from the 80s, and that's not a good idea. It not when plastics are involved. No. 
I've got it's, some it's good for the book though because it's uh, it's, no, it's good for good for the comedy uh, with with lousy equipment. A boring trip as well. Yeah, <laughs> another boring trip. <laughs> Make shit happen. But this didn't. This really it wasn't boring. The skiing trip was not boring. A lot of stuff. No, that's there stuff was a happened. lot of difference between that one and, 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 and the other ones. Mm. Um, on the book itself, I really enjoyed reading it. Thank you. That's good to it's, hear. It's, I'm not, uh, I like reading, but I only read uh, history books. Only because history books? Yeah, they, because that gets me somewhere. It makes me, it, it makes me fit in the, in the time frame, basically. Um, I, don't, I don't read fiction whatsoever because they're made of stories. I've got my own stories that I make up, that's good enough for me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so when they asked me to do the interview for, for SMP and you know, I popped uh, the website, I was like, okay, now I have to read a book. Yeah. A different one, but it was really it was enjoyable to, to, to do. But it's not fiction. Sorry? It's not fiction. So no, it's not fiction. Helps. No, no, no. This it's not is history something. either. No, it's not. It's, it's neither of both, but that's maybe. Maybe that's why I, I like it. It's not a travel book as well. It's more on, on um, maybe it's about religion. Yeah, in a sense it is. It's about okay. the outdoor religion. No, it's not about outdoor religion. It's a bit, well, it's similar. I've got one final question. Okay. Is Calvinism your religion? Calvinism? <laughs> Calvinism or Calvinism? No, Calvinism. Calvinism uh, could be uh, a religion and I'm thinking of starting it. Uh, so if someone wants to follow me, I'll I'll consider starting Calvinism. But then you'll have to be on Instagram and on Facebook. <laughs> That's true. If you want followers nowadays. Yeah, but I am on Instagram, but not, not as a religious way. leader. No. <laughs> don't be a religious leader. No, I won't be. I, I don't think that's for me. I'm. I, I have too much of a sense of humor to be it, a it was religious. It's a cool leader. idea to write the book in this manner. Absolutely. Thank you. So, welcome back. I do hope you liked this video and he is a pretty interesting guy if you ask me. Now, the question that I have for you to answer to win this book. Um, Ara talks about what you should do, according to him, when you finish a long hike and how you should get up the next morning. And I do totally agree on what he says. So please, if you know the answer, leave it below in the comment section and I will pick a winner with the right answer. And if you're Dutch, you get this one. And if you're English, I'll try to get a English copy of the book, of course. Um, if this is the first video you see of me, then you might not know that normally I only make videos on reviews and sometimes a tutorial. And I am a 100% independent reviewer. I'm not being paid to make my reviews, I don't have any affiliate deals and I don't have advertisements on my website. And after reviewing, all the products are being sent back to the manufacturer. So check out my videos and if you like what I do, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the alarm bell so you know when I upload a new video like my Facebook page and please follow me also on Instagram. Um, and if you do, many, many, many thanks in advance. And I know he doesn't like it, but I do, and you will too. Enjoy the outdoors. Ciao, ciao. And if you want to know what reviews I'm making at the moment, well, it's about a Hulta Force X. It's about the Loom Cube Light, which is very nice for photography. It's down there over now, enlightening this book. Um, I'm doing a pair of new hiking shoes from Innovate. I'm doing a backpack from Fjallraven and a tent from Fjallraven. I am doing a review on the new Hilleberg Anaris two-person hiking trekking pole tent. So I've got a lot of stuff coming up in the coming months. But first, it should be a little bit better outside to do some really good shooting. But for now, if you didn't see one of my videos before, just tune into one of those that I'm here on this page now.